I call this meeting of Fairfield County Council to order Monday, June 11, 2018 at 6 p.m. First item for business is the approval of the agenda. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved as presented. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Six to zero, the agenda is approved. We're now down to the invocation. Council Member Roof. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day you've given us. And Lord, we, we pray for uh, Billy and Rachel Smith as they move on with their lives to Louisiana, at least for the time being. And we pray that one day in the future, not too long away, maybe they'll be able to move back here in Fairfield County again. Lord, we just ask that you guide and direct us as we make decisions for our county and that everything we say and do will be according to your will. And Lord, we just ask as, as we all leave this place that you give all, us all safe travels and mercies back to our respective homes. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Roof. Uh, next is the approval of minutes from our regular meeting, May 29, 2018. Do we have a motion? So moved. It's been moved and properly seconded that we approve the regular, minute, uh, regular meeting minutes from May 29, 2018. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor of approval? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Six to zero, those minutes are approved. We have no public presentations tonight. First public comment session, Mrs. Davis. We have one speaker, Mr. Randy Bright, speaking on old business. Randy Bright, District 1, Ridgeway. I like the musical introduction. <laughs> old business. Not much on the calendar for old business tonight, but there should be. And let me tell you why. It's very important that we review councils and government accomplishments for the previous fiscal year as we're winding down that fiscal year in June. Who benefits from reviewing the top 10 accomplishments of the year? Well, certainly those who are going to be standing up for re-election needs to toot their horn. Certainly the citizens benefit because we re can realize what's going on in our county, what we're accomplishing. And maybe even more importantly, we could, it's an opportunity to let the whole world know Fairfield County is a county on the move. We're not just sitting, sitting on our hands. So let's review, perhaps even next meeting, what the top 10 accomplishments of this council for the previous fiscal year, since that's the last meeting of it. And when I, something that comes to mind right away is the Providence Hospital deal. I mean, it may be a top 10 of all time. Uh, on the other side of the coin, you, you might say the EMS deal was a, was a big accomplishment. However, be specific. The giving the EMS more money for salaries is not the end. The end is, tell us how that improved the turnover factor in EMS. You know, we talk about recreation. Don't just say, as an example, We've improved recreation. Tell us how have you have improved recreation. We added 10 ball fields, 12 hiking trails, six fitness trails, 22 basketball courts, and five basketballs. Be very specific on what you did. Don't tell us in this summary of accomplishments what you almost did, what you would have liked to have done, and what you're fixing to do just what was accomplished. And I bet if you do this, you will say you were there, that you established a tradition, that you held yourselves and council and Jason accountable for what was accomplished the previous year. Toot your horn, show us that you're proud of what was done, get yourselves we are elected in the meantime and keep the community well informed and keep the world well informed that we're a county on the move top 10 accomplishments of the previous year thank you thank you that concludes segment one thank you we have no public hearings for tonight ordinances resolutions and orders 
Item A is third reading on ordinance number 698. This is an ordinance to amend the Fairfield County Land Management Ordinance number 599 to provide for the zoning reclassification from RD1 to B1 of 150.32 acres owned by Sharp Recreational Properties. Applicant is Fairfield County Council tax map number 203-00-01-157-1. Zero zero zero. Property is located at 3248 U.S. Highway 21 South Ridgeway, South Carolina. Do we have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that council provide third and final reading to ordinance number 698. Do we have any discussion? <coughs> I'd just like to say, um, I don't know if the person's here tonight. Somebody came last night, uh, uh, not last night, last meeting, uh, speaking in opposition to the ordinance citing noise concerns, and I would just uh, point that person to our noise ordinance if that's a, a problem down there. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, those in favor of third and final reading? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Six to zero, third and final reading is given to ordinance number 698. Item B is third reading, ordinance number 699, an ordinance to regulate construction and development of flood hazard areas in the unincorporated areas of Fairfield County, and to repeal ordinance number 586. Second. All right, we've got a, a motion and second properly made to provide third and final reading to ordinance number 699. Any discussion? I think we discussed this in detail at the last meeting. Those in favor? Aye. Uh, Those opposed? All right, by a vote of six to zero, ordinance 699 is provided third and final reading. Uh, ordinance number 701 for second reading, an ordinance to amend the Fairfield County Land Management Ordinance number 599 to provide for the zoning reclassification from R1 to RD1 of four acres owned by Edward and Bonnie Sanders. Applicant is Edward and Bonnie Sanders. Tax map number 093-00-00-026-000. Property is located at 1783 Durham Place Road. Do we have a motion? been moved and properly seconded that council provide second reading to ordinance number 701. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Roof. Yes, Councilman Roof, I'd be glad to. Uh, I will defer for the details uh, to our uh, community development director, Mr. Chris Clawson, but this has gone before planning commission and they have recommended, uh, I think unanimously, if I'm not mistaken, this rezoning. Uh, Mr. Clawson, if you could give the details. Sure. Um, this is a property owned I'm um, sorry good evening council um, this is a property owned by Edward and Bonnie Sanders um, more towards uh, Lake Watery um, they're actually at they're from New Jersey so they're moving to the area they had purchased a mobile home they were unaware of the zoning restrictions for a mobile home um, being located in this property with the R1 zoning so they're requesting RD1 um, there are already a number of mobile homes in and around that area um, their property in particular, though, is really surrounded by undeveloped lots, um, but this area is already um, depicted in the future land use map as a rural community, so one of the approved districts is RD1. Um, so it is in keeping with our future land use map. It was just that blanket rezoning that, that caused this issue. So. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Pauley. And you stated there's currently mobile homes in that area? Yes, sir. Any other discussion? All right. Seeing none, those in favor of providing second reading to ordinance number 701? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Six to zero. Ordinance 701 is given second reading. And we now have no board and commission minutes to approve tonight, no appointments, no old business, no new business. County Administrator's Report, Mr. Taylor. One item that I have tonight, we will have a report from our uh, Director of Vehicle Maintenance, Mr. Ricky Mosey. Good evening, County Council, County Administrator, favorite kind citizen. My name is Ricky Mosey. I am the shop manager of the Vehicle Maintenance Shop. I'm here tonight to tell you a little bit about the maintenance shop. Fabric kind of maintenance shop, it consists of what it, five employees, three mechanic, one part clerk. This is this maintenance shop building that we work out of. 
So we got five bay. That first bay is like a drive-in service. And there's the second bay is like a lift bay. And we got two full drive-on bay with two big lift, 30,000 pound lift and 50,000 pound lift. Now the last bay is considered as a, a car wash bay. And this is our team at the maintenance shop. The employee, the number one team. Shop manager do this, to supervise mechanic and the park clerk, make sure the vehicle is you know, repaired correctly, and safe, and maintain, make sure the, the equipment is safe and ready for serving uh, on call, I mean, people on call, and have them ready for the service, in time they call and ready to go out. We're gonna make sure they're ready. Mechanic duties. This full service mechanic duties is to serve Fabric County vehicles and make sure they're safe and put my to call and do a little bit of welding, <coughs> fabricating, building, I mean, repair, not just call, but equipment too, also equipment Fabric County have. Park room clerk duties. The park room clerk is her duties to all the parts, make sure we have the parts in for a mechanic man, so we can do the job in a time amount. And then say and also pick up parts, deliver parts, and pick up the pick up vehicle and deliver vehicle where we may need it, where they want to repair or something, they go come in the park clerks do that and lower one on the staff. Fabric Maintenance shop. We be, we do repair for a fabric kind of over 250 bigger and equipment for a fabric kind, of, and it's not to include a patrol car, fire truck, ambulance, motor grader, bulldozer, back over tractors, and also we do a lot of fabricating for the shop. Fabric kind of serve fabric. Kind of department serve these are the department that we serve. In fact, we kind of different part of EMS, different one that have bigger and different equipment that we maintain for them. Fabric kind of maintenance duties apply and remove this. If every kind of maintenance duties that we um, apply decal graphic on vehicles and repair the cars and then. Also, carry out survey calls. Then also, um, uh, survey they you know continue repair on dump truck bed, whatever you know the kind of need. You know, we do repair on a different kind of vehicle. And just keep things rolling smooth and safe for our peoples. This is the new fleet salt program that we have for the maintenance shop. I say is a step up. For the maintenance shop, where we used to do things, we work all over by paperless. We go on paperless now, and like I say this is where the new stream that we have fleet side for bigger. It's it's a bigger help. It makes things more quick. At the very beginning, they you kind of they be kind of hesitate by doing it, but but they love it now. It's it's the way to go. Like I say, it's step up, moving forward. And like I say, but they enjoy it. It's also the way we can go back, pull. Like spend some different vehicle, like by the VIN number, get the VIN number, the history of the vehicle, what we need. And this is a typical day in the maintenance shop where we were saving money. This is an EMS unit. They went to the it went to the shop and they say it, the engine need rebuilding. And so we got together and compared like three hundred dollar different and replace an engine. Rebuilding engine wouldn't have but like one year warrant on it. By replacing, put a remand in it, we got two year warrant. And this is a slide where we were removing the engine, the engine. And as you see we're using a fault lift. Why the boom truck it, it wouldn't pick it up it's too heavy. That's why we hope next year we put it in for a fault lift. That's why we need a fault lift. And this is some of the equipment that we work on. This is solid waste that were a roll-out truck that we have. We, some of the department equipment we have work on, like public work, 
want to boom more that we keep up maintenance on. Cost saving. This is one of the bigger fire, fire department. On the Seri truck, this we installed the winch on the front of it. It's, they didn't all they, all they do is buy the, they bought the the winch to brush guard for the winch. And we mounted on the truck and mounted the winch on the truck for the fire department. And this winch came off of one of the truck that went to the sale when the fire truck went to the sale. They didn't have to buy a winch. They just bought the brush guard. That's all they needed, and we installed it for them. That's called saving them and try to help them out. And this is. On the, this is a, a slide of the trailer that the, the main shop built. That's what we do with fabricated, some of the fabricated work that we did, that we still do. A little bit, whatever the, the shop, uh, the pop come, like shut the pop and they sign, pop work, you know, like fabricate stuff. This is some of the work we do. And this is one of the transit van. It's in the wash bay there. This is showing that we do use uh, in, inmate to help keep the very clean. And he do a really good job of keeping the transit vehicle clean. The one you see, he takes credit for a lot of vehicles right here that's clean. He do a good job at it. And this is the slide where we were in Mr. Medic 5. This one we put the engine in. This mechanic right here working on it, getting ready to come out. And this is Medic 5 where it's completed and running and running real good. This is another department vehicle that we that we had on the yard that we were showing this. This has been really just born with Miss Anderson. It's this old truck that's done his animal control. This is another cost saving for the for the shirt department. We they, they used to buy that vehicle with decals on it. The saving now. I'm not sure that what how much the charge but they were paying for the decal. But um we put them on the cars now and they come plain white. We do the whole striping of the car. This is a complete job of one of the cars that we did. And this is another department vehicle transits. And this fleet, another vehicle fleet that we keep up transiting. And this is another car saving for the fire department. <coughs> fire department got bread trucks and seri no bread trucks and seri trucks that we put in the decals on. And Ms. Jason told me that I think the decal was about eleven thousand dollars for them to put them on, but they I think they just spent like seven thousand dollars for the decal, and we put them on. They had a total of ten vehicles we doing. I think we got five more big truck like that to do. Just another um, picture of the five truck decal, the kind of decal we put on from the like, door over on the side, and this is one of the bread truck that we doing. That we did the decals on the back of the tailgate and also the side of the doors inside the truck. The decal we put them on. They don't come like one whole big decal. They come in section, y'all are red, y'all are red. And that's what we had to put them on. They give it. He give the sheet, the guideline, the outline of where it go, and that's what we go by. And this is another saving that we do. Service call. This one a motor grade that one mechanic went to on a service call. We do go out and do service call and they say the AC belt wasn't working. They even inside troubleshooting, see why it wasn't working, make sure the fuse that wasn't blowing. They can find anything, just need a belt on it. No, that was just blowing free on, I'm sorry. <coughs> and this is a fabric kind of maintenance shop. That is what we do. We take pride in our work for God, put Chicago on these vehicles. Like for my family, your family, EMS. Like say they gotta be ready to spawn when they're ready, and we try to keep them pay up so they can go when they need to go. And it's the end of Fabric I mentioned. I like to thank God for your serving. Like we love what we do. Thank you. Mr. Anderson, do you yeah, have something? I'd like to add to Mr. Mosey. Uh he's very remiss. All of those uh mechanics that you see are ASC certified in inspections. Uh they do have their certification for liability uh standpoint. They do a very good job of cost savings. I know, Mr. Douglas, you always talk about our vehicles. That's not 250 cars. That that includes everything that we have from motor graders to everything. I don't want you to think we got 250 cars rolling around. We do not. <laughs> uh, what we do is anytime we take a car off, they strip the vehicles. And we if we can reuse them, uh, we will. Uh, if we have an old vehicle, and 
with that software, I can come to y'all and say, this is why we're replacing these vehicles, because of the cost or the year or their wo out. So that software has given us a analytical uh, data that we can analyze to tell what cars need to come off, and that's what we did in the last budget when I was doing all that swapping that y'all was uh, looking at me about. But they do a good job in bringing that to me every year so I can recommend to the county administrator what we need to change. And also, if we have a vehicle that have a uh, bad motor, instead of buying a new vehicle, we replace the motor. We'll get another five years. That save us twenty, thirty thousand dollars They put it in. The car still is running. As long as the car is not in physical uh, distress where it's been wore out from the chassis, we keep, we keep rolling with it. So they do a good job in making sure we are being safe and making sure we're being economical. And I just want to tell Ricky, thank you for all you do. Mr. Pauley. Mr. Mosey, do we ever send any vehicles out the county for maintenance or service? Yes, every now and then we might send one most likely for something that the maintenance shop cannot handle. Say like you've got a transmission problem or warranty work, something like that. But nine out of ten we try to do it in the house. We might do what we can, like say you say we might put a part on some we might do the, the labor part of it. Then uh, then it might have to fine tune it, but we do most of the work in house. Thank you. Mr. Roof. Yeah, it is it's very apparent that you do take pride in your work and and all your employees, and it's very impressive, and, and the cost savings that you've shown, and I uh, just want to say we're proud of you for all the work you do and and, and all the employees. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Thank Douglas. You. I recently visited the maintenance building, and I commend you for the hard work and efficient operation your department produces. Uh, some vehicles, because of your department, run with as much as 300,000 miles on it. Thank you. That's it. Mr. Robbins. Mr. Mosey, I was questioning how you do work with that clean shirt on right there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know me. <laughs> but I, I, I've known Mr. Mosey a long time, and he does take pride in, in all of his work that he does. So I, I do appreciate the love you put in your job also. Um, just one question. How many vehicles do you say we have ready for auction? Would you know that offhand? Right we might have about, I think, just a couple of fire trucks they brought down. Won't be taking decal, something that was already out. The grid finally mm -hmm. bring them into the shop now. They're supposed to be into the shop. Okay. That's the only one we have right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, employees also. Okay. Ms. Goins? I definitely want to say thank you, and we can see the pride in what you do and the love for it. Thank you so much, and your team. I like that. Yes, you have a team. That's right, and I thank you so much for all you all do for Fairfield County. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mosey. Thank you. Anything else? All right, we're now down to second public comment session. We have four speakers for this section tonight. First, Mr. Michael McCoy speaking on summer camp. Good evening. My name is Reverend Michael McCoy. I'm the pastor of the St. Mark Baptist Church there in Simpson. And with me today is my great board, uh, some of my deacons, my chairman of the board, uh, my finance chairman, and, and, and a couple other chairmen that, um, that's with me today. Um, I stay in North Augusta, but God has called me to Fairfield County. And when I got to Fairfield County, I saw there was a great need for children here in Fairfield County. Myself and Pastor Bailey of the First Baptist Church, we did a community youth service at the high school. And at that point, I found out that there was over 100 homeless kids here in Fairfield County. Some of the children were sleeping under the football bleachers. Some of the children were staying behind in school, sleeping in the staircases. So that was a big concern in the minds. So at that point, we uh, attained a building that was donated to us down from my church. And, you know, by the grace of God, we're going to try to turn it into a transitional unit for homeless kids. And the school district just uh, awarded us to be able to use the, uh, the Gordon School here in, in Winsboro. And that's where God had told me to do a summer youth camp. And, uh, and excuse my dress wear because that's where I've been today, hanging up basketball goals, playing with children, assembling classrooms, uh, sweeping, mopping. And today we had over 75 kids at the summer camp. Now, but 
the summer camp, God told me to let every child in Fairfield County from Ridgeway to Jenkinsville to Blair to Simpson and even in the city of Winsboro to come to camp and don't charge them. And I'm keeping that word that God has told me to do. And I'm here today because I need your help. These not just my children, but they are your children. And sometimes when we take public office, we'll say that, uh, well, anything that we can do, just let us know. So I'm here today to let you know there are some things that you can do to help us with our children here in Fairfield County. I would like to request from the county to help me make this camp a success. Not only the summer camp, but during the school year, we're going to have an after school program. And we're going to have a place for these kids to come off the streets and be able to shoot some pool, video games, library, uh, computers. But it takes money. And by all means, I know some may say that, well, it ain't too much we can do, but it's something that you can do. I'm asking this board here of Fairfield County, because it's your children, to dig in your pockets and help me with these kids in Fairfield County. Now, I can't speak for what some other pastor may do, but I'm speaking for what Reverend McCoy can do for these kids on the behalf of St. Mark Baptist Church. Thank you, Reverend. Next, Ms. Terry Vickers speaking on Chamber of Commerce. Good evening. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. It's been a long time. I feel at home. Um, I said Chamber of Commerce because I'm going to talk about several different things. Um, I hope all of you are aware that this is our uh, Ag and Art Farm Tour weekend, the 16th and the 17th. Father's Day, and we're the only county that will be having this tour, so we're hoping that uh, by virtue of being Father's Day, that a lot of families are going to take advantage of that and bring their fathers out. On Thursday, we will have our kickoff dinner. We had 150 tickets to sell. When I left the office today, we had five left, So, uh, and people are coming from everywhere so it's out at the robinson house the pearl at lake monticello and it's going to be a tapas meal which is six courses of taste of each and it's going to be delicious still horse caterers is doing the um food and uh we're excited about that so the farms, we have uh, seven sites, and they range from active uh, producing vegetable farms to uh, agricultural animals, alpacas. I was out at the alpaca experience uh, Saturday, and that's exciting for children and for fathers. The other thing we have coming up next week on the 21st, um, the Chamber will have their annual Chamber membership meeting, and that's going to be at the Fairville Electric Co-op starting at 6 o'clock. And after that, we will have the first summer movie, free summer movie, downtown, and uh, the movie is Sing, and that will start about 8.30, so we'll move from from one site to the next. <laughs> so we hope you'll all come out, bring your children. There will be a food truck there, and it's a great time, and it's free. So, Well, except for the food truck. <laughs> and then on the 22nd, the next night, we have Shaggin' in the Street, and that is the reunion band, Clyde Sanders and his group, and Mr. Beach Music, um, Gary Bass, if Gary Bass is from Fairfield County and is in every um, 
memorabilia club that you can think of dealing with beach music. So we're excited that he's going to come back and perform with that band. And also, I've heard rumor that there will be some junior Motown groups performing on stage. So it's going to be really good, and I hope you'll all come out and support all of these events. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Next, Mr. Virgil Porter speaking on finance and economic development. Madam Clerk, Mr. Chairman, and the rest of you county council members, I'm going to fast forward through finance. But anyway, I haven't heard anything lately on uh, the county's fund balance. And going on to economic development, I see where four plants have been announced, and two of them are employing only 36 jobs. And one, of course, is a very low-paying, if not minimum-paying, jobs. So I'm wondering, again, if we're going to lead, follow, get out of the way from some of these people really interested in economic development. And I don't think I'm speaking as a neophyte tonight because I have had many, many, many years of experience in economic development. And if there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. <coughs> Still got a lot of time. <laughs> That's all, Madam Clerk. Thank Mr. you. Chairman. The final speaker is Mr. Randy Bright speaking on You Can Get There From Here. Randy Bright, Fairfield County, District 1. Ridgeway said a little bit different that time. So we talked about at the top of the evening about reviewing our top ten or whatever accomplishments from uh, this current fiscal year or the previous fiscal year, if you want to look at it that way. And and the win-win for everybody that that would be, including accountability. And we had a great speaker from our maintenance department. And he obviously holds himself and his team accountable. And we've talked about accountability. Well, how about even more accountability for our county team by setting your top 10 to be noted next year accomplishments? What are your priorities for next year? And I'm not saying spend a couple million dollars on a consultant to figure it out what you already know or can figure out yourself. but. Let us know the direction. What are the priorities of the county for next year? What are the key priorities? And in economic development, well, let's be more specific than just say economic development. Um, come out with some specific things, some specific priorities, so we, the citizens, on TV, everyone, the world knows not only that We've accomplished a lot the previous year, but now we're planning to accomplish even more next year. So that we have direction, we have a rudder, and we're, we're focused on these priorities. And we can get bogged down a lot with a lot of different priorities. If it's just the top five, that's, that's okay. But they would have to be priorities that impact the quality of life of you, me, and everyone out there. Where are we headed? Where are we going? I know we want to go up, but how are we going to get there? Please include that in your beginning of, of the year uh, announcements so that we know what our priorities are. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes segment two. All right. We're now down to council time. Any council members have anything for tonight? Mr. Robinson? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. First off, I just wanted to remind everyone to get out and vote tomorrow, regardless of your party. Make sure your vote is counted. Um, secondly, um, to the uh, comment from Pastor, I found it kind of disturbing. He said 100 kids, uh, uh, possibly homeless. That's, that's definitely a disturbing number. It, you know, if 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 it's any accuracy to it, not not doubting you, but I'm, I'm just saying it's disturbing, and. Uh, Thirdly, I just want to wish our, our chairman congratulations on his uh, 
past wedding and also I wish him well in his uh, future endeavors. So I think he's done a great job as a chairman and I uh, hate to lose him. Thank you. Mr. Paul. I have two things to Pastor McCoy and the board for being here. Thank you for what you're doing for the kids of Fairfield County. We sure do appreciate it. And, and I agree 100%. Council need to do everything they can for the kids of Fairfield County. And that shirt that you got on is one of the best shirts I've ever seen at a council meeting. Uh, so you can wear it anytime you come. <laughs> the second thing I have is this weekend it was brought to my attention that county employees are discouraged from coming to county council meetings. I spoke with Administrator Taylor and spoke with Deputy Administrator Anderson, and they assured me that this is not the case. So I urge county employees who want to come that they are welcome to come. The only thing that they are not allowed to discuss is personnel matters. They need to follow the chain of command when dealing with personnel matters. But I want every county employee that wants to come to a council meeting, feel free to come without any retaliation from any administrative staff or anyone else. Thank you, Mr. Pollock. Ms. Goins. Good evening. And first, I would definitely like to say to our team leader, um, congratulations and God bless you. And I know you're going to do excellent. And uh, yes, we're going to miss you. <laughs> yes. But we thank God for the journey that he has you on. Also, I want to say in a follow-up, and it's just awesome how things will work out. But to um, the pastor, you said 100 children homeless, if it's only one, it's our concern and our responsibility to make it none. And that's the effort that we're going to have to work for, too, that there are no homeless children in Fairfield County. We can't take care of everybody else, but we can take care of home first. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Also, um, I like what um, Mr. Randy Bright said about Fairfield County moving forward. I've been on council now, I think a year, about a year and a half, and I've observed some things, and I've seen some things, I've learned some things. But I also know that in order to move forward, you have to address what, if you have problems, you have to address those problems, and then you have to find a way to uh, fix or relieve those problems. So I'm going to just speak, and I, I wrote it down so I won't get off track from a point of view of District 4 the problems that are in District 4 that needs to be fixed in order for us to move forward. And also, I encourage the community as a whole. And the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. The true neighbor will risk his, his prestige and his position and even his life for the welfare of others. That's quote by Reverend M. L. King, Jr. And we often say, uh, if we see something, say something. But the time comes when we have to do something. On the annexation that just recently happened, I thank God for his guidance and thank the people of District 4 for taking a stand to the voice paper for their publications, all persons for their concerns and prayers. This was not about me getting back or trying to show what I can do. I have enough sense to know I can do nothing by myself. It was wrong to take over people's property without respect, awareness, warning, explanation, or voice in the matter. But I'm thankful they know we all have a choice. A forced move that offered no benefits, no amenities, nothing but a chance to pay more taxes. Greed and selfishness will destroy a person, a nation, and it's wrong. Just like the operating of the Jenkinsville Water Company is wrong. Putting over 900 plus citizens in a debt of $645,000 in addition to all legal debt and whatever else that's covered up. Members had no notice, no input, no meeting. Some will say they can come to the monthly meetings, but when they come, they can't say anything and surely they won't be told the truth. They don't, and, um, don't even ask about documentation and accountability because FOIA is out of the window. 
off the table and non-existent for them. The group has violated bylaws of the company and probably every rule set for public utility companies. No policy and procedures in place. Just do what I want, when I want, and how I want. The county, town of Winsboro, Ridgeway, and all entities that receive public, county, state, or federal monies or support are held accountable, but not Jenkinsville Water Company or town of Jenkinsville. The company has been drilling a promised well long enough to have water supplied down 215, 213, and 321. And we still have old deteriorating pipes in the system, line breaks, water loss not accounted for, no ball water advisories, but money is still being collected and used. This has been going on for years. It's time for a change. It's time to give the company back to the people and the community for the purpose it was intended to supply safe drinking water for all. The same group continuing A, and is now it's embarrassing, it's getting so it's really embarrassing, as referred to a sidewalk to nowhere. Wasting money, pretending to be doing something. If they cared, they would have requested the money for a greater need in another area. Greenbrier has many heavy foot traffic areas. Dawkins has been asking for sidewalks and lights for years. These people know that, but don't care and use some of the same people in those areas for self-promotion and it's time for a change. Community breakdown, mass mailing, and pot shots for spots. I'm not campaigning, I'm not endorsing anybody, I'm just stating facts. I call the person to which the card was wrote about and that's what I do, that's who I am, and I don't intend to change that. They return the call. And after saying hello, and they appreciate me calling, the next words were, we have to pray for all of those that were a part of this. Pray for those who spitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. That's compassion. That's love. That's a team player and a leader. When people or a person do anything, say anything, use anybody to get what they want, they will most likely do the same thing to keep it. That's the mindset, attitude, and action of too many that has undermined potential growth in Fairfield County. They can't be trusted. Remember, eagles don't crawl, they soar. On the I-77 corridor, and I heard uh, mention about economic development, on the I-77 corridor and building community, to the economic development team, to our staff and our team, thank you for all you do. Recruiting and economic development has, result, has evolved tremendously since five years, 15, 20 years ago. The challenges and competition is ruthless and unlimited. But I thank you for using knowledge, wisdom, and your inner man to recruit and secure, to the best of your abilities, companies that will grow relationships with Fairfield County. No one can ever know if a company will stay or leave. That's their leverage. Our responsibility is to persevere, be vigilant, futuristic, and never give up. To property owners, I plead with you to invest in your property. Stop waiting for someone else to do it. It's yours. Clean it up, fix it up, make it livable, rentable, sellable, and affordable for others. We don't truly give until we sacrifice. Fairfield County is not helpless, and we are not hopeless but blessed. We haven't lost anything. Change is another opportunity to work harder together, those that are willing, and use what we have and whom we have to accomplish even greater things. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Goins. Anyone else? Mr. Roof. It's, uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody that came and spoke tonight and appreciate all the comments. And we do listen sometimes. You may not think we do, but but we really do. And, Pastor, that's a shock. that was really shocking. I know a lot of uh, members at St. Mark's. I hadn't met you, but I'll be, I'll be looking forward to meeting you. And and um, I, hopefully the county can help. But I will, I will certainly make a personal contribution because I think that's outstanding what you're trying to do to help these kids. Thanks. All right, anyone else? 
All right, thank you. At this time, we have executive session. Two matters for tonight. A is a legal matter. It's an update on litigation against SCANA, SCE, and G in reference to the abandoned VC summer new nuclear project. Item B is a proposed contractual matter of discussion regarding the potential purchase of real property identified as Fairfield County TMS number 126-03-01-001-000. Do we have a motion? Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that council go into executive session for the matters as stated. Those in favor? Those opposed? Six to zero. Council's in executive session. Thank you.